Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Marine Film Channel. This is Moshix. And today we're going to end our mini-series on how to use the various programming languages offered by IBM, I wouldn't say a standard, but almost standard, on MBS and ZOS to do systems programming. When I say systems programming, what I mean is accessing some of the system tables that reside within the nucleus. And we've seen plenty of examples on how to do that um, in, in the previous parts of the mini-series where we used First, we use Assembler extensively, both on ZOS and on MBS. Then we used uh, Rex, we used even COBOL. I even have a video on how to use the C compiler that's offered with ZOS. And then finally, uh, now today, we turn to PL1 as the last part of this mini series. And um, we've discussed at length how in each and every address space, you have some very important system tables defined the mother of all tables is would be considered the CVT, the common vector table. And within address, every address space, there is, um, there is an area uh, called the prefix storage area, which points to the CVT. And then from the CVT, you can find all other tables. And then what you do when you want to extract information is go from table to table until you find the field that you find and create all the various pointers. As I've shown with assembler, it's actually quite easy. COBOL, it's also very easy. Now let's, today we're going to find out how to do this with PL1. Specifically, we want to find out the job uh, name of the job that's currently executing, which will be the job itself. So uh, we've looked at this extensively. And what I'm going to do now is uh, program this on an, in PL1 on the ZOS system. And as I've done with the previous videos, while I program it, I switch to um, I record this and then play it back faster inside the video so that it doesn't get too boring for you folks.
As you can see, uh, I've managed to limit it, make it mostly work. However, there seems to be, so I have no more uh, direct errors, um, well, except for the optimize, which we need to eliminate. But there's still an invocation compiler backend ended up normally, which is what we here see here. Unable to load face. And when I search for this, it tells me there is a problem with the compiler. And the fix is available. Uh, it used to look this works, no problem whatsoever. So let's see if we can f remove some um, stuff that makes it easier for the compiler to do its job. And we launching 6229. No, we still have the problem. We eliminated, of course, the optimized problem. And we need to remove also the reference. So let's do that. Let's see if it's happier now. 6.230. Nope. Still unhappy. Uh, and we still have invocation compiler backend ended up normally. So it didn't do its job. And it looks like there's something with the ordering. That's what it's telling me. Compiler must reorder such declares so that B is effectively declared before A. When B was the last declare in its block, this could sometimes lead to enterprises declared variables A, where B is based. Yeah, that's exactly our, our problem. So I don't have a compiler that can that can deal with it. I used to have an account at University of Leipzig, but for some reason that account is not working right now anymore. Maybe a storage problem. So I don't know. Let's see what we could reorder. When B was the la A as character storage B, which is exactly what we have. Where B is based upon variable declared after A. B. Yeah. 
is based variable declared after a. So of course it needs to first declare, yeah, it needs to b needs to be declared before so that it can full. Yeah, that's exactly the problem we have here. I don't know how to get around this. Um, so, because as you can see here, um, we can do something like this. Let's try to help the compiler. PSA pointer. Uh, let's make it pointer. Maybe this will help it. 6231. Nope, so it's not helping it. Mm. Since we're running in 31 bit mode, we could try something like this. Hold on a second. We could do bin fixed 31 init 0. Let's see if this helps it. This seems to have made it work. Let's see. Nope. Uh, it, we fixed the problem because the problem is obviously this statement here. Uh, the qualified PSA pointer does not have a locator type. Yeah. So how do we? It's complaining about line 22. Yeah. Obviously, refer to it here. Let's see if this somehow helps it. We just have a buggy compiler, that's the problem. So I need to research this a little bit more and see if it, well, I need to actually run this on a newer system where I have a newer compiler because this compiler doesn't, doesn't seem to work. And this is only for compilers. Yeah, this is for all compilers that I have access to. Hmm. So let's see how we can solve this. any of you know a way around this compiler bug, let me know. But right now we're kind of stuck in location compiler back and ends up normally. So basically the compiler itself fails. And, and the problem is of course this guy here. Mm. So based Yeah, I don't know how we can fix this. I will research this a little bit and get back to you. Okay, folks. Uh, so, after very lengthy research, and the way that uh, the IBM PL1 compiler wants to work with structures, uh, I have to rework this whole uh, swinging from table to table, which is uh, so typical in in accessing uh, ZOS or MBS uh, control tables, because of the bug that's listed here. 
um, for which I just have don't don't have a PTF for this, and um, I don't know where you know, how to obtain it. But so by reworking this um, and doing the allocation this way by using the address here, so I have PSA null, which I address well, initialized with zero, and then I base this off this, and then I start to create. Um, and so found some other examples on the web, but uh, start to create the whole table. I'm able then in the end uh, to come to this part, oops, where then I can uh, I can put the the job number, which is what we wanted to do from the beginning, out. So if I run this. Um, Let's go out here. Six two five nine. That's a little slow. This machine is a little slow. Here it is. So I get. Oops. So here it is. The job. Let's look at the bottom and the job. Yeah, I get the job number. So, uh, so this goes mostly fine. It does, of course, have a complaint. Of course, here it's absolutely right. That we're using fixed bin 31 for to contain a pointer, and of course that's assuming that uh, everything is 31 bit. So this code would never run in 64 bit because you can't put in a 64 bit address in a 31 bit uh, variable. But other than that, um, everything else should work. And you can see how this some of these things are highly dependent on the PL1 compiler. Now PL1 does have pointer support and pointer, pointer arithmetic but as you can see um, this doesn't really work i tried to run this also on mvs and i got a uh, similar problem uh, slightly different problems but there the compiler needs an area allocation uh, let's go check this out so is it this one um, nope so no, where is it? Yeah. So I run. I try to run the same program here, and of course, then I get a different problem. Job nine six nine. Let's see what this tells us. Uh, start nine six nine, and this, of course, is a well, fifty year old compiler. It will complain. Identify base in base attribute on ACB declared in statement pointer. It's a non based pointer. So we could try to fix it now by saying, um, by doing something like this um, DSA PSA app bin fixed 31 um, init 0. And then we say PSA pointer equals pointer based address PSA P. And then we base this off PSA pointer. And then hopefully this should work. I can try this again. I like for PL1. Okay, let's run this again. As you can see here, this is all still a bit flaky. Uh, no, that didn't go well at all. Other fire. So, illegal parenthesized list. Let's see here. Well, I have one, two. I'm closing this off. Been fixed. Yeah, as you can see, this is all not really well supported yet um, and so I'm having trouble to make this work I'll continue looking for other examples which maybe one day we can uh, pick this argument up again we managed to make it work on ZOS um, and but there we had issues with the compiler being buggy so I have to say overall PL1 has been a somewhat disappointing experience I'm sure other people other people make, make this to work but um, but I, I've had some uh, serious issues here. Oops. Um, 
so but anyway you can see PL1 is also able to extract some information we would have to continue looking to this to uh, work around the bug in the compiler uh, maybe the ZOS compiler already has a fix for this the ZOS 2.1 uh, which I for which I have an account uh, at the university at the university in Germany University of Leipzig but my account there is not working for some reason um, and so we can't try this on anything newer than this this is US 113 so uh, but this gives us an example uh, or gives us a taste on how this works in PL1 if you ask me personally I think assembler is the most elegant way to extract information from the from the nucleus from the operating system from MBS or ZOS it's just the nicest way to do it now one more thing I wanted to mention here and that is a lot of people tell me hey but how is it possible uh, if, if you look at the beauty of this just uh, before we get into the question people ask um, extract information from the nucleus look at beautiful this is very simple and then you look at the stuff that we have to go through here I don't even know where is it uh, look at this I mean this is just so more beautiful you don't even have to think about pointer and area based and allocation you, you're just running this on the machine now the question some people ask is how is it possible for a non uh, authorized and non privileged user to extract information from the nucleus well most information that's in the nucleus can be extracted because it's read only and you would have to have a special key to write back to the nucleus so uh, there's a very open minded uh, approach in MVS US that thinks that everybody can read without any causing any harm of course password and stuff like that cannot be read um, but everything else can be read and why shouldn't we be allowed it's all the remember the nucleus of uh, of MVS is mapped into the address space of every address space running and so if it's in your address space you should be allowed to read it anyway so I hope that um, we learned something from this uh, video of I, what I learned is that PL1 is actually turns out to be the most difficult language to uh, to do system programming for MVS and ZOS in part because the compiler is bug in part because it's a very old compiler on MVS um, it turns out COBOL for which I have a video is actually very very simple and elegant and assembler of course very simple and Rex which we also have so I think this closes this mini series of how to use the four languages Rex assembler PL1 COBOL to access uh, actually five because we also have a C program example to access information in the nucleus and I will not pick up on this information anymore uh, on this on this mini series anymore and uh, this is, if you have any questions please post them in the comment section below this video I uh, will be uh, posting this program um, on the cloud MBS uh, system that I'm running for which everybody can freely obtain an account all you have to do is go over to moshix.dainu.net we presented with a simple form and some instructions fill out the form and I'll get an email and within a few days I'll open up a free account I've had some examples of people logging in and uh, to the to the to the system here and creating huge data sets and three or four five or six times the exact same data sets and uh, and then uh, never accessing them again so I've temporarily banned those users so when they when they contact me and say my password is not working, um, I can have a conversation with them. But other than that, it's free. It's a lot of fun. Um, come and join us. If you like this video, please press on the th thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed to the Moshix mainframe channel yet, I would urge you to subscribe now. Thank you very much and goodbye.